Anna Maria Helt here with Basmati.com. And this week I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about a specific herb. And so I'm going to talk about Damiana. And the, uh, the botanical name is Ternera. And there are a lot of different species. You may have heard of Ternera aphrodisiaca, giving you a hint at what it does. Ternera diffusa, but lots of other Ternera species. And so, uh, yes, indeed, Damiana is a wonderful aphrodisiac. And it's probably its most famous use, I would say, and it acts as an aphrodisiac in a variety of ways. One of the ways is it simply uh, provides better blood flow down there, and so uh, blood flow going to the genitals is one of the ways it's useful for sexual functioning, but it's also great for low libido, uh, especially if libido is low because of anxiety any stress about sex in general, uh, Damiana is a great herb for support there. So it's working by many different mechanisms to help people uh, with their sex drive and their sexual functioning. Now, I mentioned uh, anxiety. So Damiana actually is a, a lovely, relaxing, kind of calming herb on one hand. Um, and at the same time, though, it, I find it quite mood enhancing. A lot of people find it very uplifting. And so you'll see this often in those ubiquitous chocolate damiana elixirs and tonics. It's a great way to use it. Uh, but it's a great it's a great mood enhancing herb, even outside of the realm of um, sexual health, uh, just for people that are in kind of a funk. And so I remember being at an herb conference in Arizona and hanging out with some friends and <laughs> we all were smoking Damiana and could not stop laughing. It was a very joyful herb and we <laughs> giggled for about 20 minutes. One of, like We would all stop and one of us would get started again laughing again using Damiana. Uh, be careful smoking it. I've noticed at least for me and some of my friends that uh, you can get a bit of a headache if you overdo it. More is not better usually when it comes to herbs. Now, uh, a lot of people know about the mood-related effects of Damiana and the aphrodisiac effects of Damiana, but uh, maybe a little bit less known is that it's a wonderful cold and flu herb, uh, and it has traditionally been used as such. Um, and so even using Damiana by itself at the first sign of an itch or a little bit of a cough or maybe a little bit of fever or chills, the herb by itself, in my experience, um, and in well, many people's experience that use it for this, uh, can kind of stop that in its tracks. And so it, it works by itself. It's a warming herb. Uh, it'll also work fine in a formula. And so it's considered warming and, and a bit drying, and it can help if you've got a lot of congestion in your lungs. It can help uh, if you've got a lot of congestion in your head and your head kind of feels like a basketball because you're all stopped up. Um, but don't forget about using Damiana for respiratory stuff. Uh, another use for Damiana that is maybe not so well known is for acne. Uh, now, I, know, I realize that acne can be very stubborn and you need to pay attention to things like what you're eating or what you're not eating and working with that. You need support for the liver and the kidneys are, are basically our organs of detoxification. Uh, waste removal when dealing with acne, but this could be one of the botanical allies that you play around with and just, you know, give it time. Uh, whenever working with any skin issue, it doesn't necessarily just go away overnight. Uh, and so whether you're using Damiana or some other botanical support for your skin, again, just give it time uh, to work. Don't just do it for a week and decide it's not helpful. Go for a little bit longer, try a month or two. Um, and before I move on to some of the other great things that Damiana does, I just want to show you the herb. It's, there you go. It's, there you go. Um, Oh, it's got a very distinctive kind of a musty and somewhat sweet smell that you'll be very familiar with if you've ever had Damiana cordials. Uh, it does have a wonderful flavor for smoking. Um, and since I'm talking about the plant, it has beautiful bright yellow flowers. And I look to those sorts of flowers when I am looking for um, plants for the blues. So St. John's Word is another one that comes to mind that has those lovely bright yellow flowers, even calendula um, for mood. Uh, but anyway, 
uh, back to Damiana. And so another use for Damiana is going back to the genital urinary system. It's great for inflammatory stuff going on down there, whether we're talking about say a urinary tract infection and you know Damiana may be useful there for a variety of reasons aside from the fact that it's antimicrobial um, as well. Uh, Damiana can be useful as a uh, part of the formula for prostate swelling and prostatitis. It may be useful for uh, other kind of inflammatory irritating things going on in again the, the genital urinary system so that the urinary system how we pee and the reproductive system. Uh, another thing Damiana is good for is the digestive system. And so it can help with people that get nervous digestion. And so meaning you get butterflies in your stomach, uh, maybe you get indigestion if you're under a lot of tension, under a lot of pressure, feeling stressed out. Uh, also great for a lack of appetite. Uh, and so Damiana can help um, stimulate that appetite, especially maybe if you are sick or just coming out of an illness and you, you know you just aren't really feeling like eating but you do need to start getting some food in you uh, Damiana can be great for that and especially and you've probably already guessed this um, if stress is suppressing your appetite um, and so you know for some of us we tend to eat more when we're stressed out but um, some of us uh, lose that appetite and so Damiana is helping with that, probably in part through nervous system support. But it's also kind of bitter as well, so it's going to stimulate our digestive processes and make us more receptive to eating food and help our body actually better deal with that food. Um, and so another thing in the digestive tract that Damiana can do is help with what's known as atonic constipation. And what that means is that your bowel is not functioning properly to move that waste along, uh, to move those stools along and then get them out of the body. And so our intestines go through uh, contractions and that keeps things going. And if there's something going on with the nervous system and the musculature in our colon, uh, it can lead to constipation. Uh, you know, we wind up holding on to our wastes and that's never a good idea. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of the puke and purge, moving everything out really like acutely but we do want to keep things moving along and so um, Damiana in general you can think of it as an herb to keep things moving along it's going to help you poop it's going to get that libido going it's going to get your appetite going so it's a wonderful moving herb in those regards um, it will get things going and so when you think about Damiana don't just giggle and think about it as an aphrodisiac it is a wonderful one um, and I have stories that I'm not going to share with you about that, <laughs> but it's a great herb for many systems of the body. And I've got to be honest, my favorite use of it right now is uh, for the respiratory tract that I talked about. And so play around with this herb, uh, explore it. If you live in a warm place, you may even be able to grow this beautiful plant in your garden. Now I live at 6,500 feet in Colorado. It's not going to happen here and I don't have a greenhouse. But if you are more in the south, say down in um, southern Arizona, southern Texas, very southern California, uh, you might be able to grow this in your garden. So you'll have something that's great medicine, uh, but you'll also have something that's a really pretty addition to your garden. And with that, until next time, be well, be healthy. <laughs>